to the Fantasy Madness Podcast with me, your host, the Mad Chatter, Ryan MK. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Yes, yes. Hope you did. I mean, how could it not have been wonderful? There was football. I mean, me personally, I got into a lot of other stuff. <clears throat> Mainly, rearranging the house. Moving some stuff around. I think I might have talked about this on a previous pod. Maybe it was my miscellaneous debris one. Either way, you can find both my podcasts, all my content, all that stuff. Follow me on the Twitters, at RMK Madness. You can get links to all that stuff. I'm on the YouTubes. We're doing good stuff here. Yeah, doing good stuff. But doing some rearranging of the house and preparing for the football. I also, I did have to take some time away from football yesterday because I needed to watch the Nuggets. I had to watch my Denver Nuggets in game six. And honestly, I was so into football, I had forgotten about the fucking Nuggets game. And then I got an alert on my phone, Nuggets come down or come back from 17 point deficit to tie it in the fourth quarter. And I'm like, what? I've got to get on this fucking fourth quarter. So I watched and the Nuggets closed it out. And here we are moving on to game seven on Tuesday night. Yes. Looking forward to that. Yes. But anyway, we do need to get to the football because that's what this weekend was all about. It's week one. We're excited. But I also did want to touch on something. And that's basically fantasy football Twitter. Now, I love fantasy football Twitter. I love the community. And I'm glad that I'm part of it. You know? And really, it's my first year being a part of this, right? So I'm, I'm not exactly used to how things go on the Twitter during the week. So I kind of observe today, and again, I was busy rearranging even today while watching football. It, it was great, though. I just carried my iPad around, and I put it on the red zone, and I just sat there and watched red zone while I was cleaning the house. It was great. But... Uh, you know, I, I stayed silent and just kind of, I wanted to observe and on top of being busy. And I was thinking I might do that every week anyway, just kind of a little radio silence on Twitter during the games and then full content otherwise. Because most people are on Twitter and chatting. But that's what I, I do want to talk about one thing. And that's basically the... The I gotchas and I told you so's. Um, I guess I gotchas wouldn't be right. The I told you so's. The the bragging. The victory laps. I, I don't know about that. No! Right. I, I'm not a big fan. No! No. And really, I mean, teach their own. The people are free to do whatever they want. I really don't care that much. But I guess to me... It just seems like, hey, it's week one. I mean, I've talked about this plenty. The first week of the season is always a little bit sloppier, a little bit uglier football. Teams are trying to find their way, figure their shit out. It's likely to be more like that this year. Why? Because of COVID. So you got to take shit just, you know, you can't buy into every single little thing after week one. Now, obviously, some hints can be taken, but there's really no need for a victory lap after week one. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm going to get into it in a second, but <laughs> I've got my own, and maybe I'll, 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 I'll speak a little, but really... Goddamn loud ass car. But really, for me, I want to wait and see how shit turns out towards the end of the season. You know, how right was I about my season long picks? Now, obviously, you can also be right on a weekly basis, but we're gonna get into this. I just think I just think some of the victory lapping, the bragging, 
it's just a little bit lame for it being week one. You know, I mean, it's week one, you know. If we get into week six and you're calling some crazy shit and you hit it, brag like a motherfucker. This is just my opinion, though. See, I, this is my opinion. There's really no rules to any of this. I'm sure there's some unwritten rules. But again, this is really my first, you know, foray into the Twitter community, uh, fantasy Twitter community, pertaining to, you know, analysis and things like that. I'm really putting myself out there. And it was just, you know, different seeing some people's reactions. And now there were plenty of good analysts out there that came out and said, hey, why are we doing this? It's week one. You know, saying the same thing I'm saying. So I can't sit here and act like I'm all high and mighty and the only one doing it. No. I just did find it weird. Some of it, you know. But again, I'm newer. I'm not, not, I'm not entirely sure, you know, exactly if this is like a, something that happens every week on Fantasy Twitter. I don't know. I guess I'll find out. <laughs> There's people watching this that have been on Fantasy Twitter forever. Like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? This guy is... That's a, I, I, I do realize I'm a bit odd. That's okay. I do know what I'm doing a bit in the fantasy community, but my point through all of this is we're all going to be wrong. We're all going to be right. There's no need for I told you so's. You don't need to brag so much. It's, it's a, but, it, it, but again, there's no rules. I don't make any rules, so you do what you want. Just my opinion. And with that being said, I'm going to talk about a few things where I was wrong and right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You suck, you jackass. <clears throat> That's right. Here is where I did suck. Here is where I was wrong. Because, you know what? Honestly, if I can't be wrong on occasion, then I don't want to be right. You know? Kind of makes sense in my mad little way. But we'll keep, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. So some areas where I was, man, I expected the Browns to put up a much better fight than they did against the Ravens. I really did. A much better fight. I really thought, not that I thought Stefanski was anything special, but that's a solid coach. Now, come on, get in there and do something. And I figure OBJ's going to be healthy. He's going to be bounced back. They still got Jarvis. They got, I don't know what's going on. I mean, you know, Baltimore's good, but is their defense that good? Come on. Cleveland? Gotta get your shit rolling at some point. I mean, so far, still shitty. It's week one, though. That's the, if you had any sort of rooting interest in what the Browns would do, that's not a great start. Chris Herndon. I expected more of him, particularly with Mims banged up and them just really not having anybody. But, man, the Jets are just terrible. They're just terrible. And it sucks, because I really feel like Darnold is better than he appears, but he's just got, he's on a shit team with a shit head coach, and you just feel bad. Crowder went off, <laughs> over 100 in a TD. I'll take that. Love me some Crowder. He went off. But other than that, oh, fuck me with the Jets. Come on. Goodness. Brian Edwards, there's another one I got wrong. Yeah. Pretty sure I'm not the only one. We, there's a lot of us got that one wrong. But it made sense. Making waves in camp, you know? Tyrell Williams, injured reserve. But no. No. One fucking target. <laughs> Eesh. Leonard Fournette. You know, I knew he was late getting to the team, but I really thought he'd see a lot more action and he'd look better. Maybe he just needs some time. But after week one, yeah, Rojo's still the guy, and he didn't look half bad. Didn't look half bad. And so we'll see what happens with Leonard Fournette. But you you got to think based on the contract. They're going to get him more involved at some point. But we'll see how that goes. Rough start for the Tampa Bay Tom Brady Buccaneers. The TBTB TB Buccaneers. 
and then DeAndre Hopkins. Now, again, this is one one week, but it does look like he's going to get the ball quite a bit in Arizona. And my thing was there's not enough targets to go around if they want to include Christian Kirk and Larry Fitz, and they really didn't as much in this game. So we'll see what happens going forward. But for right now, if you pick Topkins, you're looking pretty safe. And if you pass on because you were worried about the targets and all of that, looks a little foolish. Like, I'm not unhappy. I usually do pretty well with receivers, but that is a bummer. You know, you figure you kind of like to have some Hopkins on the Cardinals, but you're just like, at that ABJ, there's no way. Might prove to be worth that ADP, unlike I expected. So, but then, there's some that I got right. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. So, first of all, the Chargers backfield. Because this is a big one in the Twitter fantasy community. Big debate on Austin Eckler. And I've been saying, hey, I like Eckler. But Tyrod's not Philip Rivers. And Josh Kelly, yeah, there's a very good chance him or Justin Jackson. Jackson, I did it again. Jackson. Jackson. That. That him or Justin Jackson, maybe a combination of the two take on that Melvin Gordon role. And if that's what you're getting, okay. But that also probably means less work for Eckler. But this is not the same offense. It's just not. It's not going to be. Now maybe things change when Justin Herbert enters the picture. But yeah, I just don't, I mean, look at what Eckler did today. 19 carries, 84 yards, Zero touchdowns. One reception. Oh, don't worry about the carries because he'll he'll get plenty of receptions. One reception. Meanwhile, Josh Kelly went... Sorry, Joshua Kelly. He went 60 yards and a touchdown on 12 carries. Slightly better yards per carry. No catches for him. But you have to wonder... What's this mean for Eckler going forward? Because I know if you invested in Eckler where you drafted him, you were expecting him, uh, uh, you know, you were expecting so much from him and you didn't get that week one. And you have to be concerned that you're not going to get it going forward. Maybe in doses, a game here, a game there. But you didn't expect Josh Kelly to be this involved. And I tried to say it. But all the Eckler lovers out there, you, you know, I heard people say he was a jag. A jag, Mr. Kelly. Yeah. No, no, no. That dude's for real. And he's making it known week one. So, LaVisca Chanel, I also called him. See, I like James Robinson. I've been talking about him. But the more it got close, the, well, the closer it got to Sunday and the more it looked at things... I'm thinking this is going to be a little bit more of a shootout because Indy should be able to score on the Jags' defense. And so Jacksonville and Mr. Minshew, the mustache mania, magic mania, mustache magic mania, yeah, we'll go with that. You knew him and the Jags were going to have to throw to keep up. James Robinson, not the greatest of pass catchers, so you know he'd be the man on the ground, but was he going to catch passes? And see, this is where you know LaVisca Chenault. Where does he come in? Now, albeit, he only had 37 rushing yards. Or I'm sorry, 37 receiving yards. And then he had two rushes for 10 yards, but he did get a touchdown. But my point is they were wanting to get him involved. So I do believe we'll see more of Mr. Chenault going forward. Adam Thielen still kicks ass. I've been preaching him all off season. Six for 110 and two touchdowns. Even with garbage ass Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Not a Kirk Cousins fan. 
and former Viking Jerick McKinnon. Now, he only got a few rushes, a few targets, or a few receptions, I should say, but he did get a touchdown, and it's just good to see him. It's been, I think I saw something somewhere, it's been over a 1,000 days since he's played a game. So kudos to him for getting back. Glad to see him used in the game. And I think it's a good sign we see more of him going forward. So I'll take a little bit of a pat on the back on that. Because, you know, I wasn't the only one with McKinnon either. I wasn't the only one probably on most of these. But <laughs> I was also one that said not to worry about A.J. Dillon. Let me Aaron Jones. Do you want to know what A.J. Dillon did? Two carries. Two carries. Less than Tyler Irvin. Mm. But A.J. Dillon's supposed to take all this work from Aaron Jones? Now, they did use Jonathan Williams and Tyler Irvin a few times, as I said. But Aaron Jones still had a solid day. Not one of his bigger days, but a solid day. So I think still good times ahead for him. Even though, I'm sure at some point, they will get A.J. Dillon more involved. But that'll likely be at the expense of Tyler Irvin and Mr. Williams. So, I think Aaron Jones is going to be just fine. Anyway, moving on. Finally, my last right. TJ Hockett said, I said it was hawk time, baby. I said hawk was going to hawk smash the Bears. He didn't quite do that. <laughs> but he did have 56 yards and a touchdown. So he paid off if you played him. Mm. Now we'll have to see what happens with Mr. Kenny Gallagher going forward. Oh, and by the way, oh, we'll get to, to you know what? I'll save that because we're gonna get we're gonna get more into the Lions in just a second as we get into my thoughts, my observations on Week One as a whole. What the fuck? <laughs> Let's get into this. Week one observations. Here we go. <coughs> Holy fuck. Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs had himself a fucking hat trick. Good for him. Good for him. 25 carries, 93 yards, three touchdowns. Not the greatest yard per carry, but he did very well. Also, four catches for 46 yards. Josh Jacobs, the man on Sunday. Aaron Rodgers went off, too. Did did enjoy that against, you know, my guys, the Vikings. One of my teams. But that's all right. I tried to tell the Vikings, don't extend Kirk Cousins. Don't extend Mike Zimmer. Make these motherfuckers earn it. Make them play out this year. But no, they gave them the extensions, and now they're set for an extension of mediocrity. Because <laughs> I think that's what you got coming with the Vikings. But anyway, moving on. Rodgers goes off 364, four touchdowns. Adams had 156 and two. MVS had 96 and one. Lazard had 63 and one. So I guess they didn't need receivers after all, I guess. Eh? 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 Next, 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 next. The poor Lions. <laughs> the poor lowly Lions. Man, DeAndre Swift. That's such a bummer, too. Because I really thought, man, I know they signed Adrian Peterson. But Carrion Johnson is garbage. AP's old. They're going to get Swift going at some point. But I could just see. This is one of those things. that these One of these fucking coaches, I swear. They could just hold a grudge like... How long do you think he gets... I saw someone ask this on Twitter, actually. How long do you suppose Swift gets punished for this fumble? It was bad, man. You can't be fumbling the ball. You can't be doing that right there at the end of the game to win the game. You can't do that. Just can't do it. But it happens. And we'll see. But he is the best back on that roster. There's not even a question. So eventually, they're going to have to give him the work. I just, I don't know. 
And Cephas, Mr. Quintez Cephas, only three receptions on 10 targets. Those 10 targets actually led the team. He just only caught three. Now, I didn't see the whole game. I didn't see every catch. But I do know Amendola had a good game on less targets. So, a little bit of a worry there if you're a Cephas fan, if you ask me. Eagles offense struggled. Seemed like it was going to get churning, and then it kind of slowed up. But it was Dallas Goddard, out of all people. Man, some of my lineups were hurt because of Deshaun Jackson. Fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, like it's his fault. I gotta stop. This this new chair I'm using is too creaky. I gotta sit farther back in it. There we go. There we go. It's too creaky. Too creaky. Josh Allen had a hell of a start to the season, right? Over 300 yards, two TDs. 57 rushing yards with another TD. You know, not bad. Now, it was against the shitty Jets. And apparently there was still a couple of poor passes. And he had a couple of fumbles. So, NFL-wise, you know, long-term-wise, I gotta see more from Mr. Josh Allen. But fantasy-wise, he had a hell of a day. He may not bring you this every week, but I'm sure you are going to see more of this. He's going to pass it more. He's going to run it. He'll, he'll have some touchdowns. So, going to get points for Mr. Josh Allen. J.K. Dobbins, hey, you know, everybody was looking for the uh, rookie running backs to make so much noise, you know, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire did. But everybody, you know, People's eyes were on Cam Akers and DeAndre Swift. And interesting that uh, J.K. Dobbins really had himself a day. He didn't get a ton of work, but he did get two touchdowns. And he had the second most carries on the team. So that's good news. And so he may become the man sooner rather than later. Mark Ingram wasn't anything special. Continuing with running backs, Kareem Hunt outplaying Nick Chubb. Now, was this due to, well, the shellacking they were getting? But that would be weird. Nick Chubb can catch passes too. So what's going on? Hunt went for thir uh, 13 carries, 72 yards. He also had four receptions. Compared to Chubb's, 10 carries for 60 yards and one reception. Now, Kareem Hunt did just get the extension, but what's going on here? Are they going to hang on to Hunt and phase Nick Chubb out? No way. My guess is Chubb bounces back next week, but that's definitely a shit start for him, and you're bummed if you got him on your team. Same with Joe Mixon. Gets that big contract him himself, which, you know, it's great, but man, rough start for him. Super Cam is back. I'm loving this. Uh, you know, I used to really dislike the Patriots, but you separate Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, and I find it all very interesting and very entertaining. Super Cam in the Patriots uniform. Cam Erica. Camerica. <laughs> I think I've used that once already before. But anyway, only 155 passing yards, but he had 75 rushing yards, two TDs. He did enough. He's going to do more as the season goes along. And he gets more time with Bill Belichick. Yes. That's what's going to happen. So they're going to be fine. Another one where I felt like, man, they're going to come rolling out the gates. And they did. And they will. And they're going to be good. So all those Bills fans, I know you look good today. But watch out. But they might actually, the Patriots might actually have a challenger in the division now in the form of the Bills, but we'll see. I'm still skeptical on the consistency of a one Josh Allen. But we'll find out. We'll find out. Jonathan Taylor. The other big rook everybody wanted to talk about. 
seems there's, there's, there's this big divide between the Edwards Hilaire lovers and the Jonathan Taylor lovers. And I'm like, why can't we all just love each other, man? Because honestly, I'm a JT fan. But I ain't got no issue with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Like I said, you, you have to be impressed with what he did in his debut. You also have to look at a couple of things. Like, hmm, what did he not do? Well, he didn't get hurt, but he... <laughs> Sorry, that was totally said all fucked up. Let's try this again. <laughs> I, you suck, you jackass. I know, I know. I'm working on it. Jesus. Okay, let's try this again. So, Clyde Edwards Hilaire did about what you could expect. Like, what you'd want. Now, the goal line carries... That's bad. And people want to point out, again, well, he got six goal line carries. That should tell you something. He got six because he didn't get in the first couple times. Like he should have. So, mm, yes, yes. I see the love for Edwards Hilaire, and I get it. But I also think you can't be so blinded. Did you look at, hey, Naheem Hines got a lot of work today for the Colts. After Mac went down, got to be a little scary if you're a JT fan. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens because I think JT is just going to go up and up and up and up. And I'll explain why. But before we do, since we're on the Colts, I want to talk about my thanks for nothing. Group. Duh. Because winning. Yeah, we're here for winning. And sometimes winning may not come because you have all the points on your bench. Sometimes this happens, and sometimes when this happens, it's not because of a bad move you made or anything like that. It's because some rando that nobody should be starting on their fantasy team gets you a shit ton of points. Now, it's week one, so these are a little bit uh, less crazy because, well, who the fuck knows what's happening in week one? Shit gets a little easier to predict as it goes along, but initially, no. It's very difficult to figure out the week one. Yeah. So, thanks for nothing, Naheem Hines. I have you in a few leagues, but started you in none of them. Not sure I know many people that did start you. Can't think of any off the top of my head. So, thanks for nothing and your 21, 28 rushing yards with a touchdown and your 8 receptions for 45 yards and a touchdown. That's going to start to go away. Peyton Barber, thanks for nothing. Except for vulturing touchdowns. This motherfucker, listen to this stat line. 17 rushes. But two touchdowns. He got you two touchdowns. Yeah. Thanks for nothing. Because really all you did was steal from Antonio Gibson. Thank you very much. Also, thanks for nothing, Keelan Cole. Where were you a while ago? We didn't need you. We need DJ Chark and LaVisca Chenault. Where were you last year when those of us who had faith in you we're expecting you to have a great year. And the year before. No, 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 no. You just had that one year and then you abandoned us. And now you make an appearance, an unwanted appearance. Let me gone with you, Keelan. Actually, I'm just kidding. I did, you ball out if you want to, man. But I do think that's an aberration because the more the season goes along, the more LaVisca Chenault we're sure to see. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, wee, wee. Oh, wee, wee. Yes, wee. wee. Okay. Okay. That's what I got. That is my observations from the Sunday games. And continuing on with more Colts chatter, I've been talking about JT rising up, becoming more of the man, getting more work than Hines, going forward. Why could I be saying that? Hmm. Well, Perhaps we head to the infirmary to find out. The infirmary. 
Now, I'm going to be honest. The infirmary is not as full as I anticipated it would be week one. Now, leading up to week one, we had a shit ton of peoples with hammy injuries, right? And a few others with other injuries, but I'm sitting here thinking week one, there's going to be some bad stuff injury-wise. And it really is pretty mild. So, I've been mentioning the Colts. Well, that's and talking about them a lot in Jonathan Taylor, and that's because Marlon Mack left the game, didn't go back. Turns out he's going to get an MRI today because uh, they believe he has a torn Achilles, which means he'd be out for a while, which means Jonathan Taylor time. And I'm not trying to get happy about Mack's injury. I like Mack a lot too. I've, it's, I haven't gotten rid of him in the dynasty leagues I have him in because I'm like, this will be Jonathan Taylor's backfield, but that could mean Mac moves on somewhere else. Because I do like Marlon Mack. So, not willing to give up on him yet. But this injury sucks for him. But it's great for Jonathan Taylor. I'm sorry. It's a great for Jonathan Taylor. It just is. Justin Jackson, he injured his quad, was not able to return. So, with this... That leaves even more run for Joshua Kelly, right? It's just him and Eckler now. So we'll have to see how that goes going forward with Mr. Jackson. And even if he does get healthy and he's fine for next week, it's pretty clear the pecking order in this backfield right now. Now, maybe that changes next week, but I'm thinking if Justin Jackson is banged up, that's probably not. I think we continue to see the Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly tag team show. Devontae Parker re-aggravated his hamstring. Speaking of hammies, those damn things. So this could be a problem. He was dealing with it for a while through training camp, and now it's re-aggravated. So this could be something he misses some time. To me, this means bump up Preston Williams, bump up Mike Gusecki, let's roll. Le'Veon Bell hurt his hammy today as well, yesterday. <laughs> and it it sounds like Gase regrets a little bit putting him back in. Um, so it sounds like he could be out for a while. And should Le'Veon Bell be out for a while, miss some time? Obviously, they're going to go to Frank Gore. Now, today, they had Josh Smith playing. Josh Adams, sorry. Josh Smith. (laughs) Josh Adams. They had him playing. Got a couple of carries. And so they could use Gore Adams. But I'm wondering... If that means they're going to introduce the Michael P. Ryan to the mix if Bell were to miss some time. Because surely that's what would happen, right? Surely. No, Henry. (laughs) Sorry, I'm saying that. I know, I know. Terrible, terrible. Just awful. But, uh... Yeah, that's, that's that's what we got. I, like I said, there's not a whole lot of major injuries, at least that I could find or that I read about. So it's, whoa, bonking my goddamn microphone. So that's what we got for the infirmary. But now, 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 I want to get into a little bit of a Monday night preview. Yeah, it's a little bit of a Monday night preview. Touchdown! And So we've had our first Thursday night game. We've had our first Sunday slate. And now Monday night. The first Monday night of the season. And what's great about this is, as always, the first Monday night of the season has two games. And I love two games. I love two games in one Monday night. I do, I do. We begin with Pittsburgh at the New York Giants. Now, I think this could actually be a fun game. 
because I expect the Giants offense to be decent. I expect the Pittsburgh offense to be a little bit back to normal. I'm not expecting Ben Roethlisberger to be great, but he'll be a step up from the garbage they had under center last year. You know what I mean? Deontay, Deontay Johnson was banged up a lot during camp. J James Washington spent some time on the COVID list. Meanwhile, Chase Claypool was making a name for himself. I do think we're going to see Juju with some action. But who other than that? Are we going to see the Rook, Claypool, make some noise? Or are we going to see Deontay Johnson, James Washington? So they got a killer core, receiver core. And we could see this go a bunch of... I mean, they're, they're Deontay Johnson's okay, right? Deontay, Deontay Johnson. I'm just, now, now I need to double check because I'm like... Deontay Johnson, football wide receiver. No. Um, it sounds like he's fine. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like he's fine. He's fine. I had to be worried for a second because I was like, I don't remember reading a lot about him. Like, I thought he was over his injury, but I realized I wasn't sure. Anyway, I really like James Conner. I am going to be paying attention to see how much they use Anthony McFarlane. And it could be not much because McFarlane missed a lot of time with injury himself during training camp. So it's just been a crazy, crazy fucking offseason, right? So that's kind of what I'm looking at with Pittsburgh. Moving on to the Giants. You know Saquon's going to smash. Now we'll have to see how the wide receivers go. I like Darius Slayton to hit a few deep target to get a few deep targets. And I like Sterling Shepard. I really do. But most of all, I like Evan Ingram. I think Evan Ingram is going to have a big first game along with Saquon Barkley. Not going to be enough to beat the Steelers, I don't think. But it's going to be an interesting game. I do think it's going to be fun. I know some people are down on the Giants, but I think it's going to be a good one. And then Tennessee at Denver. My hometown Denver Broncos. It is another team that I root for. But my hometown team. So I got to have some love for them. They're taking on the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans. So with the Titans, Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown, did you see Matt LaFleur? He was wearing a mask. Not Matt LaFleur. God damn it, what's the Titans coach name? Matt Bra Mike Vrabel. Vrabel. I know it's Vrabel. <laughs> anyway. I really... Uh, I really need to start getting more sleep. Anyway. Whew. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Derrick Henry's gonna smash... I love A.J. Brown this year. Now, is anybody going to emerge as that second receiver? I, Johnny Smith. I do believe it's Johnny Smith time. And he was working out with Tannehill in the offseason. I do think he's going to smash. Why? Because. Well, see, here's the problem. Denver, in particular... Should have a pretty good defense. They lost a couple guys, but, you know, they had a couple guys. They're, they're looking solid, but they lost Von Miller. That's a shame. That hurts them a good amount. So I'm trying to figure out exactly how good this Broncos defense is going to be. We'll find out more tonight, but I do think the Titans are going to be able to move the ball a little bit. And I do think that they're going to give Ryan Tannehill a little more rain, a little more free rain with the offense, a little throw it a little bit more. And if they do that, it could be a pretty productive offense. But when it comes down to it, when it comes down for Monday night, you're definitely trusting Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown. Let's keep an eye on what happens with the rest. For the Broncos, Cortland Sutton... Game time decision. If you have him, hopefully you sat him. I mean, that's what I did. Unless you've got someone you're really sure about that you can plug in for Monday night. 
tough to think of a receiver on the Titans. Now, if you're in a flex spot, yeah, maybe that's somewhere where you throw a Johnny Smith in, KJ Hamler, Philip Lindsay. But if you don't have someone like that, you would have had to have sit him so you don't take the chance, right? Would have been the smart play. I had to do it myself. It's a pain, but I had to. But that, but that being said, if Sutton doesn't play, I think more than anything, we're going to see a lot of Noah Fant, okay? But I do think that means we're going to get a little bit extra from the two rooks, KJ Hamler and Jerry Judy, because I do think they'll be able to make some impact this season. It's just when you have so many weapons on an offense, and let's face it, Drew Locke isn't Aaron Rodgers, at least not at this point. So it's not as though he's going to be delivering to all these different options. Or will he? We'll have to find out. But I do think for tonight's game, Denver has a pretty good shot of winning this because I think people will have them a little underrated. I like Drew Locke a little bit more than other people. I think Melvin Gordon will do a little bit better than others think this year. And I like, I just like their weapons. And they do still have a good defense. Missing Von Miller will be terrible. But they still got a solid defense. So I, I kind of like what the Brian. And you know what? Normally I hate on the hometown team. <laughs> but I kind of like what they're doing. So we'll see. I do think that's going to be a damn good game and a good way to close out week one of the NFL season. Yes. So I'm very, very excited. And you know what? That's about all we got. It was a fucking great week one. Hope to see some more surprises, more great football action next week. And again, we'll have some fun tonight. Watching two Monday night games. Dos! Dos Monday night games. I'm so excited. Two is just better than one. It's just better than one. Just saying. So, let's go ahead. Close up shop. Get the hell out of here. I need some food. I really need some food. And that's what I'm going to go do. So, have a great week, everybody. Enjoy the Monday night games tonight. Please don't forget, if you're into basketball at all, watch that Nuggets Clippers Game 7 Tuesday. And unless you're a diehard Clippers fan, root for them Nuggets for me. All right. All right. <sighs> let's get the hell out of here, peeps. Madcaps, let's go. Let's go. Do not forget to follow me on the Twitters, the Grams. Get on YouTube. Download, subscribe. Do all the stuffs for me, okay? You have my back. I have your back. That's how we, we do. All right. Have a great week, everybody. As always, much love to you all. Stay safe. Stay vigilant. Stay mad. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Ta-ta for now. Laters.